him, even a season of pause is a season of purpose. Even in solitude, he magnified his sovereignty. But this 2023, we will gather as one man. It's time to dream again, to dive into the unknown with faith, to explore the depths of his power, to cross the unbelief swiftly move forward to reach the unseen and witness the fullness of his glory. We are going further. tuning in. It's another blessed Sunday and we just want you to feel all the love today. Love from the Lord, love from your friends and family, and of course, love from your COG family. This is another special Sunday. Not only do we have an actual special Sunday in our in-person services happening right now, they cry for miracle. But syempre, here in our telecast, special din! The message of the Lord shared by Pastor A.J. Velasco was truly life-changing. So whether you choose to worship online or in person, we believe you can have a special encounter with the Lord. And speaking of special, today's segment is very special because we are featuring one of the Church Institutes. Life Institute is an institution under Church of God Dasma, and it helps and desires to equip leaders, potential leaders, and also the youth to champion their calling. And for today, we'll feature one of the programs under the Life Worship. So ngayon, kasama na natin ang ilan sa mga graduates ng Life Worship classes! So guys, could you please introduce yourself and from what Life Worship classes did you graduate from? Hi! I'm Justine from the Alter Chords class. Hello, I'm Cyril from bass class. Hello po, ako po si JM from the guitar class. Hi, I'm Majoy from voice class. Hi, and I'm Reiko from Voice Class. Okay, so now that we get to meet all of you, syempre, we want to know you more deeper. And mas gusto pa namin mas makilala kayo and yung mga experiences niya during your life worship classes. So we will start with Ate Reiko. What life worship classes did you enroll and from what batch? At bakit mo naman naisipan na mag-enroll sa life worship? Yan, so I'm from live voice class first batch from and kasama ko po si Coach Ces Palacio. So the reason I enrolled sa live voice is because um, the last time I had a training with like a voice lesson talaga na proper was when I was 10 years old. So sobrang tagal na nun. Kaya sabi ko this time I want to learn more and of course to refresh yung knowledge ko para na din maka-help sa akin and to be equipped in serving the Lord through my voice and through my talent. Wow! Thank you so much Ate Rico. How about you Justin? How did Alter Chords classes help you in your craft as a pianist? So, para sa akin, I think that Alter Chords classes really helped me in my craft as a pianist in a way that it gave me depth and character in my craft. Ayan. So, dati kasi, um, pag tumutugtog ako, parang walang direction, parang walang puso, walang impact. But then when I enrolled in Alter Chords, I got to learn about different chord variations, progressions, different melodies I could use. And with that, talagang mas nag-grow ako. And our Alter Chords coach, Pastor Jerome, even went the extra mile para turuan kami na talagang every note and every chord na titugtog namin ay merong, ano, ay merong impact sa mga tao. Wow! Thank you so much, Justin. And we see na sobrang dami ng learnings mo during your life worship class. 
And how about Thea JM? Can you share some funny moments or mga funny eksena lang during your live worship classes? Well, sa live guitar class kasi, very light lang environment. And it's an environment where you are encouraged to grow talaga. Hindi lang sa old musicians, but also to new musicians. No? So, um, sa live guitar, uh, one of the funny things that I could remember was uh, kapag sumisemple lang kami during recitals kasi sobrang lamig ng live studio. <laughs> Nanini kasi yung daliri namin. And, um, ayun, uh, it's just fun to learn with uh, your uh, co-musicians, uh, luma man yan o bago. And uh, wala talagang excuse eh. Uh, bago ka or luma, you need to relearn, you need to uh, reapply yung fundamentals and yung basics. Thank you so much, Kuya JM. And how about Majoy? What was your motivation sa pag-enroll sa live worship class? Mm, bukod sa influence ng friends, ng coach, which is si Ate Liz, and the mga leaders, what really motivates me to enroll is by having a goal. A goal na I really want to enhance my singing voice or like my knowledge in singing. Because diba, I'm using this voice, we are using this talents to glorify and honor God. And being part of the worship department, we want to give an extravagant worship to the Lord. And for us to do that, we need to level up. Diba? Kailangan natin may level up itong mga skills itong talents na meron tayo. May isa pa talaga na nag-motivate sa akin is you will experience the live studio. Wow. Thank you so much, Majoy. Ayan. So last but not the least, Serio. What is your message to Life Institute, your coach, and to Life Worship? Uh, gagab ko na tong opportunity na to to thank Life Institute and Life Worship for having a program wherein we got to enhance our skills as a musician and also as a worshiper. And to my coach, Coach Tonel, thank you for being an inspiration to me and also sa mga kasama ko na students. And also, thank you so much guys for joining us here. But before we end this segment, baka naman meron kayong mga friends or pwede nyo bang i-invite ang ating mga online viewers to enroll sa ating live worship classes. Ayan, so I'm inviting you all to check out the live worship classes and enroll. Yes! We assure you that you'll get quality treats plus ang saya rin ng mga classes with the coaches. And syempre, you learn so much more from the lessons. If you want to improve and elevate your skills and gifts from the Lord, iniimbitahan namin kayo to enroll at Life Worship. You may visit the link on your screen and also visit our social media pages at Life Institute Philippines on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you so much to our live worship alumna. And palakpan naman natin sila, guys. Thank you so much, Mga Buhay. We are very much happy to meet you and to have you here today to share your live worship experiences with us. And of course, uh, thank you so much sa ating mga online viewers for joining us today. And now, I know na you're excited to worship and hear God's word. Now, let me lead you to a prayer. Yes, Lord Heavenly Father Almighty, we love you and we glorify you, O God. We thank you for this another Sunday service that we are about to experience. We thank you for the privilege to serve you as your army. O God, open our eyes and prepare our ears, O God. Touch our hearts and our soul as we hear and embrace your word. Bless our speaker and let the Holy Spirit move freely in this place or even online, O God. We claim the victory and we raise you our highest praise and worship. We bring you back all the glory, honor, and praises in the almighty name of Jesus. And amen and amen. amen. See you again later after the service. See you, family. Bye! Oh
moment I've been waiting though I'm fading but nobody can stop me now Lord my desire is to see you knowing no, when I wanted to see you face to face Thank you. 
Sige, minsan pa, sino yung mga nagpapasalamat sa Panginoon? Come on, make it higher! We're gonna give our praise and thanksgiving to the living God! Come on! Come on, make it higher! Oh God, we praise you! We glorify you in our midst today! Come on, church! Thanks, 
and you deserve the highest praise. Kaya minsan, pa kapatid, pwede po ba yung mas mataas at mas malakas na palakpak para sa Diyos na buhay? Oh, hallelujah. 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 And God has a word for you in Psalms 23. It says here, The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to His name. And even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Amen. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely, your goodness and your unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. And I will live and I will dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Come on, be desperate for God's presence. Be desperate. Be hungry. Be thirsty for God's presence for the Lord.
drowned by your presence, so oh God. Like a rushing wind, consume me again, like a hurricane flood, submerge me in your living water till I drowned by your presence, so oh God. And forever I will seek to be overwhelmed by your holy presence. Fill my cup, pour on me to overflow. every thirst of my soul pour it on me to dwell in your courts is all I desire I thirst for you Lord so come fill me with living water to life drowned by your prayer so God, yeah. like a rushing wind, consume me again like a hurricane flood, submerge me in your living water till I drown by your prayer.
quench every thirst of my soul to be
God, we pray that you stay in our midst today. Bless your speaker. Give him your double portion of anointing, God, and move powerfully and mightily in this place. God, we love you, and we bring you back all the glory, praises, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray, everybody shout. Amen to God be the glory, and God bless you. Welcome home, COG fam. Here's what's up and coming in our church. It's a new season for Revival Night. Get ready for the Sacrifice Series. Let's continue to offer our worship and catch the presence of God as one man every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Friends and family, season four of The Hub is not over. The season finale is here. Make sure to tune in this Wednesday live at 7 p.m. and witness another special episode with live audience and so much surprises. Only at The Hub, the home you belong. This August 6, join us as we share the love of Jesus outside. Another grand hire is happening and we don't want you to miss it. And together, let's harvest souls for Jesus. Calling all youth! It's time for a Mentors Fellowship. Join us this August 13 with our special speaker, Pastor AJ Velasco, and experience a life-changing moment at YE Unbreakable. CLDP enrollment is now ongoing. It's time to learn more about faith, character, and leadership. Make season to grow. Classes start this August 12, so sign up in the link shown. Are you ready for further 2023? Naka-register ka na ba for our 15th National Assembly? Register now and visit www.further2023.com. Here's your guide to register. Now, for those in the sanctuary, please be reminded to switch your phones to silent mode and turn off your flash when taking photos during the service. May you be empowered as you hear the message of the Lord today. This has been Rory. God bless everyone and enjoy the service. Let's give God our very best clap offering. It's good to be in the house of God because God's presence is in this place. Good day, church. Kamusta po ang bawat isa? And sino po dito ang excited po makinig ng salita ng Panginoon? Amen. Sige mo sa lahat ng excited. Bigyan natin ng best clap offering ang ating Panginoon. And I'm also excited to be here and to share with you God's Word. But before that, sino pong nandito po nung Revival Night last Tuesday? Pwede ba makita yung mga kamay? So sa lahat ng mga nag-Revival Night, alam niyo po yung nangyari po doon. Ako po ay binenta ng aking kapatid habang siya po ay nagtetestimony. So ako po ay babawi naman this time. At alam niyo po, isa po sa mga na-testimony niya po doon ay sa aming magkakapatid, siya po yung sabihin natin pinakamatalino sa amin dahil siya po yung laging matataas yung grades. And I have to agree with that. Bakit? Kasi po kahit po sa aking exam sa pagpapastor, eh, nakita ko na ako po ay may bababang grade. So ito po yung aking naging failing grade sa unang take ko po ng exam po na yan. So lahat po ng items, lahat ng part ay failure at ang aking average ay 54%. Pero disclaimer lang po, bago nyo po kay judge ang nakuha ko pong reviewer ay mali. Kaya po ganyan po yung naging resulta ng aking grades. So, sa mga nag-aaral po uh, at nagsuschool pa, make sure na ang inyong inire-review ay tama. Amen po ba dun? Kung hindi po, kayo po ibabagsak din. So good thing, alam nyo po, ako po ay hindi lang po yung nag-iisang pastor na bumagsak. Kasama ko po yung ibang pastor po ng Dasma at sama-sama po kami na bumagsak po dyan. But no worries, kami po ay bumawi last month. At ito na po yung aking naging grade. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Ako po ay papasok na po sa second rank ng ating uh, pagpapastor sa ating COG denomination. And you know what, bakit ko po nasi-share po yan? Kasi an item from the exam struck me the most. At ano po yun? It's the word ministry. At kapag sinabi po pala yung word na ministry, in Greek po ang ibig sabihin niya is diakonos, or its meaning is to serve, at to, to serve in the performance of these tasks such as waiting on tables. So ganun po pala yung ginagawa natin dito every Sunday, every day na pag ministry po natin. We are serving tables, just like the restaurant tables, just like the eye cafe tables. Yan po pala yung paglilingkod, yan po pala yung pag ministry We are serving. Kaya po today, I came here with a message. I came here to deliver God's message to you. And God had put it into my heart, deep into my heart, to challenge you, to inspire you, to, to lead you. Saan po tayo ililid ng Panginoon po ngayon? To serve in God's army. Pakisabi nga po sa katabi nyo, serve in God's army. 
Ito po yung mensahe ng Panginoon para sa atin po yun. And if you have your Bibles with you, allow me to invite you to open it in Psalm chapter 23, verse 5. And it says here, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. And before we proceed with God's word, let's all bow our heads and let us pray. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful Sunday. Lord God, thank you, Lord God, for this beautiful congregation. And here we are right now coming for your presence. We came here for your wisdom. We came here for your anointing. And Lord God, we humbly, Lord God, uh, allow you to interfere in this place. We open up our hearts. We open up our minds. Everything within us, Lord God, is open for your movement today. So today, Lord God, we ask for your anointing, your wisdom, and your favor. And right this very moment, we already claim the victory. And we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everybody shout. Amen. 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 Lord. And I've said, as I've said last month, ang Psalm 23 po is like a summary of David's life. Bakit po yung Psalm 23 po ay naisulat niya po in the last days of his life, in the last days of his kingship. At ang isa pong nabanggit po dito ni David is the presence of his enemies. So si David po ay maraming enemies at isa sa mga enemies niya po ay dito po siya sumikat, yung story po ni David and Goliath. So kilalang kilala po natin yan. The Israelites are so fearful of Goliath. Pero ano pong ginawa po ni David? Siya po yung tumayo against Goliath with the courage of the Lord at kinalaban niya po si Goliath. At hindi po natapos po dyan yung mga wars po ni David. His very own king, si King Saul po, ay ginera din po siya. So yan po ay, I believe, is a traumatic experience for David. Bakit yung sarili niyang king, yung sarili niya pong leader, yung sarili niya pong mentor, yun po yung umaaway po sa kanya. And you know what? Nung binabasa ko po yung story po ni David, nung siya po ay naging king na, Ito po ang sumalubong po sa kanya. Sinalubong po siya ng civil war. Within his nations, may mga kakampi po po si Saul, may kakampi si David, sila po ay nag sa isa't isa at hindi po naging united yung, uh, yung nation po na yun. At yun po yung kinaharap ni David. And kung meron pong inner battles po si David, meron din po siyang external wars at yan na po kasama na po yung mga Philistines, yung iba po mga nations in the land at yan po yung mga na-experience na gera po ni David. And last but not the least, ito po yung sa tingin ko pong isa sa pinakamahirap na battle, isa po sa pinakamahirap na war ni David is his war with his own son, Absalom. Yan po yung pinag-uusapan po natin for the past months. And I believe talaga pong uh, very hurtful po ito para po sa puso po ni David kasi sarili niyang kapamilya ang lumalaban po sa kanya. So kung si David po ay may marami po siyang gera, kung si David po ay may marami pong enemies, I believe ikaw rin meron ka rin enemies, tama po ba yan? Meron kang kalaban, ako po ay may mga enemies din, siguro tayo po lahat ay may marami rin pong enemies na pinagdadaanan sa ating buhay. And makakarelate po tayo kay David dahil siya rin po ay dumadaan po sa gera. And siguro sa mga enemies na na-experience po natin, siguro po ito po yung mga dahilan, kaya po hindi po tayo makapag-serve in God's army. Siguro hanggang ngayon meron tayong fear sa ating puso at hindi pa rin tayo makausad-usad sa gulayat na kinakaharap natin sa ating buhay ngayon. Siguro po tayo po ay may trauma in the past, kaya ayaw natin mag-serve ngayon. Siguro dati nakapag-serve na tayo, pero hindi naging good experience yun para sa atin. Siguro in the previous church or previous ministry na experience mo ang leadership, kaya siguro ngayon hindi tayo maka-step up into leadership kasi meron tayong trauma. Or siguro kaya po hindi po tayo makapag-serve ng buong-buo ngayon because we still have these inner battles within us. Siguro tayo po ay nagkakasala pa rin. Siguro tayo po ay nagpo-fall pa rin ito temptation. Siguro nakaka-experience pa rin tayo ng maraming maraming failures sa ating buhay. Kaya po tayo po ay hindi makabuelo. Hindi tayo makamove forward in our lives. Or siguro meron kang external battles. Talagang dumadaan ka sa persecution. Siguro dumadaan ka sa iyong valley ngayon. Siguro ikaw ay dumadaan sa disyerto ng buhay mo ngayon. Kaya hindi ka makausad. Or last but not the least, siguro yung mismong pamilya. Mismong pamilya mo ang pumipigil sa'yo para makapag-serve ka in God's army. So tayo po ay siguro ilan sa mga yan ay mga enemies mo. Si David po, ang dami-dami ring enemies. At ano pong masasummarize niya sa kanyang buhay? Sabi po ni David in Psalm 23 verse 5, That's why, O God, you prepare a table before me. Yan po yung ginawa ng Panginoon para kay David. God prepared a table in the presence of David. At ang, nung binabasa ko po itong verse po na yan, 
it is a very humbling experience. Bakit? Ako dapat yung nagsuserve. Ako yung tao ni Lord, ako dapat yung naglilingkod sa Kanya. Pero si Lord pa yung nag-prepare ng table before you. Si Lord pa ang nag-prepare ng table before David sa lahat ng gera na pinagdadaanan niya. Kaya po dito natin mapapatunayan that Jesus Christ came here in this earth to serve. Amen po ba yun? Pumunta po siya dito para maging servant, to be a shepherd. He came here to save you and to save me. At si Jesus Christ po, pwede pong pumunta po dito sa earth na siya po ay isang hari. Pwede po siya pumunta po dito bilang isang celebrity. Pwede po siya pumunta dito bilang isang influencer para po mas mabilis ma-share po yung gospel. Pero hindi po yun yung pinili niyang path. Ang path na pinili niya is a hum- coming from a humble manger, coming from a humble home, coming from a humble profession, isa po siyang carpenter. At gusto po, dyan po natin makikita gano po ka-humble yung puso po ni Jesus Christ. Gano po siya ka-grabbing servant. Kung may example ng servant leadership, wala pong iba po yun kung hindi po si Jesus Christ. At sino po dito naka-experience ng pagmamahal ng Panginoon sa kanyang buhay? Amen. Sige nga po, palakpakan natin si Lord. If, it, if you have experienced the love of God, at kung tayo po ay naka-experience ng service ni Jesus Christ in our lives, kung tayo po ay naka-experience ng pagmamahal ng Panginoon para sa ating buhay, how will you respond? How can I respond? How will we all respond to the service that God had given us? Kaya po ngayon, gusto ko po ibida yung mga nag-respond sa call ng Panginoon para sa kanilang buhay. And marami pong ministries po dito sa church, hindi ko na po maiisa-isa po yan. But I'm just gonna name a few sa mga departments po natin. Kaya po, bida po natin yung mga nasa worship department. Sila po yung mga hindi nyo po nakikita dito sa stage. Sila po yung gumagana po behind the scenes. They are our backstage heroes. Mga nandyan po sa tech booth, nandyan po sa mga camera. Sila po yung nagsusupport sa atin dito para po gumana po yung ating worship Sunday experience. At sino po dito ang nakakapanood po ng The Hub? Yung mga nanonood po ba ng The Hub every Wednesday? So sila po yan, sila Pastor Alan, the cluster leaders, cluster heads, yung outreach department po natin. Sila po yung nag-work behind the scenes para po every Wednesday, meron po silang mailabas po na transformational message, a transformation story para po maray po maborn again. And I'm sure this Sunday may mga sumalubong po sa inyo dyan, sa, sa lobby. Andyan po yung ating mga ushers, mga relationship department na talagang gusto kong ipa-feel welcome. Sino po dito na experience na siya ay welcome in this church? Amen. Sige po, palapangan po natin si Lord. At sila po yung mga ngumiti sa inyo dyan sa labas, kumamay sa inyo para po ma-welcome kayo. And you know what, last, uh, last week, meron po tayong ginanap po na DVBS dito sa ating church. There are more than 400 kids na nandito. At nandyan po yung ating mga Sunday school teachers, ating children's ministry na nagkikater, nagsuserve sa ating mga anak, sa ating mga children, para po sila po ay lumaki na may banal na takot sa ating Panginoon. And last but not the least, andyan po yung ating administration department na sila po yung nagme-maintain ng ating beautiful facility, sila po yung naglilinis ng ating simbahan. And all across the department, all across the ministries, ginagawa po nila yan ng walang kapalit. Ginagawa po nila yan because gusto nilang ibalik yung pagmamahal na binigay sa kanila ng Panginoon. Pwede ba natin palapakan ang Panginoon sa kanilang buhay? Wow. That's how we can respond to the love of God. That's how we can respond to the service that God had given us. Kaya how will you respond? How will you respond to the love and service of God? At ano pong pwede po natin ma-realize po dito? Ako po, ito po yung pwede ko ma-realize. I cannot be a freeloader. You cannot be a freeloader forever. At ano pong ibig sabihin ng freeloader? Yung tayo po ay wala na lang po tayong gagawin. I-enjoy na lang natin yung ganda ng facility. E-enjoy na lang natin yung service ng ibang tao. E-enjoy na lang natin yung ginawa ng Panginoon para sa atin. At wala na tayong gagawin. At wala na tayong ibabalik. Wala na tayong i-reciprocate. And that could not happen forever. You cannot be a free loader forever. At alam po, nung pumunta po kami sa US ng aking dad, nakapunta po kami sa Washington. At nakapasok po kami sa isang space museum. At meron pong tumatak po sa akin na isang documentary film na napanood po namin doon. Ang title niya po is A Beautiful Planet. At ang message po nung movie po na yan is, is for the people watching na to have the burden, to have the heart to save the planet. At isa po to sa mga quote na nabanggit po doon, sabi doon, There are no free passengers here on earth. 
Why? Because you got to help your crew members. So sinasabi po nila, gusto mo bang masave yung planet? Gusto mo bang masave yung environment? Well, you got to do your part in saving the planet. Hindi pwedeng wala tayong gagawin. Hindi pwedeng iaasa na lang natin sa iba. You got to do your part. Pakisabi nga sa katabi mo, do your part. We got to do our part. At ako po yung naniniwala, gusto po natin ng pagbabago sa ating community. Amen po ba yan? Gusto po natin ng pagbabago in our city. Gusto po natin ng pagbabago in our country. At hindi po mangyayari po yan kung wala po tayong gagawin. You got to do your part. I got to do my part. We all got to prepare the table. Amen po ba yan? Sige po, palakpang po natin si Lord. We have to prepare the table. Why? Kasi yan po yung ginawa po ni Jesus Christ para sa iyo at para sa akin. We got to prepare the table because our other crew members are doing their part. Other members and workers of this church are doing their part. We got to prepare the table. Why? Because we cannot be free passengers forever. We cannot be free loaders forever. At syempre, gusto po kasi natin makasama si Jesus Christ sa table. Amen po ba yun? Gusto mo ba makasama si Jesus Christ sa table? Amen. Amen. Bakit? Kasi ano bang meron kapag kasama natin si Jesus Christ sa table? At mas ma-appreciate po natin yan when we read the next verse, the next phrase. Sabi doon, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Mas ma-experience natin yung beauty na kasama natin si Jesus Christ at the table kapag tayo po ay surrounded by our enemies. At pwede bang tumawag ng limang tao po dito on stage and help me out? with this illustration. At sa mga tum- umaakyat po ngayon, siguro po yan po yung magre-represent ng ating enemies sa ating buhay. At pangalanan po natin yung mga enemies natin sa ating buhay. Siguro yung mga enemies po na yan, ito po yung nabanggit natin kanina habang nagsisimula in our service. Siguro po ito po yung inyong fear. Yung fear po na hindi po natin malaban-labanan at hindi po tayo maka-move forward. Or siguro po ito po yung inyong trauma. Hanggang sa ngayon, meron ka pa trauma, kaya hindi ka pa makamug forward sa buhay. Or this may be your inner battles. Or this may be your external battles. Or this may be your family problems. Okay lang kayo dyan? Nakikita niyo pa kami. At ito po yung mga enemies po natin sa buhay. And I'm sure, kapag may isa po tayong nakaharap po na enemy po dyan, napaka hirap na po niyan. Ang hirap po na may isa dito na kalaban mo na humaharap sa iyong buhay. And what if kaya kung lahat pa ng ito ay may experience natin na sabay-sabay we are surrounded by all these enemies. At kapag itong lahat ng enemies po na ito ay humarap po sa atin in this table, it gives us so much stress, it gives us so much disappointment, it gives us so much discouragement, so much frustration to the point na parang gusto mo nang sumuko sa buhay. Parang ayaw mo na magising bukas kasi kakaharapin mo na naman itong mga problema na ito. Parang you just want to quit this life or end your own life because of all the depressing things na na-experience natin when we are facing our enemies. Pero sabi mo sa katabi mo, sabi mo, wait lang. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, chill ka lang. Bakit po kasi nung pandemic po, nauso po ito sa mga hotel, ang tawag po nila dito is a bubble dining Dahil po takot po yung mga pupunta po sa hotel na sila po ay maka, makakuha ng COVID. Kaya po nilagyan po ng bubble yung table para po sila po ay makapag-safely dine with their friends and family. At ganun din po pala yung sinasabi ng Panginoon para sa ating ngayon. Akala mo lang you are surrounded by these enemies, but little did you know, you are surrounded by the most holy presence of God today. Amen po ba? Sige po. Let's give God a praise. You are surrounded by God. You are surrounded by His angels. You are surrounded by His glory. Kaya kahit ikaw po ay nakaharap sa mga enemies ng buhay mo, okay lang yan kasi kasama mo yung ating buhay na Diyos. Amen po ba yan? Sige po, palakpakan po natin si Lord. And when we are in God's table, when we are surrounded by God's presence, ano po bang meron dun? Sabi sa kanyang salita, You anoint my head with oil. At nung una ko pong binabasa po yan, parang ano pa ibig sabihin nito? What does it mean to be anointed with oil? Ano bang ibig sabihin yan? So para mas maintindihan po pala natin yan, we got to put ourselves in the shoes of David. At si David, ang simula po ng kanyang buhay, siya po ay isang shepherd. At yung shepherd po ay nag-aalaga po ng sheep. 
At bakit ba nilalagyan ng oil yung ulo ng sheep? Kasi po yung mga sheep, mahilig po mag-headbutton. Yan po yung kanilang pastime. Yan po yung kanilang hobby. At kapag sila po ay walang oil sa ulo po nila, it creates injury. Pero kapag sila po ay may oil sa ulo po nila, nagdudulasan lang po yung mga ulo po nila at hindi po sila ma-injure. And I found out na ang uh, sheep po pala ay mahina po sa langaw. Meron pong tinatawag na nose flies. At kapag yung mga langaw po na yan, yung mga flies po na yan ay nakapasok po sa kanilang ilong, pagpapasok po yan, aakyat po yan, at minsan po umaabot po yan sa kanilang utak at nagdun po sila naglilay ng eggs yung mga langaw. And kapag hindi po yun na-prevent, ikamamatay po yun ng sheep. Kaya po nilalagyan po ng oil yung ulo po yung mga sheep para po yung mga flies po na yan ay hindi po makapasok sa kanilang ilong. And last but not the least, may tinatawag po na scab disease or ang tawag po dyan ay isang parasite, or mas alam po natin na parang garapata po yan sa atin. At yan po ay laging naglaland po sa mga sheep. At pwede po nila ikalagas po ng buhok, pwede po nila ikamatay din po yan. Kaya po nilalagyan po ng oil ang kanilang ulo, yung kanilang buong katawan, para hindi po sila matamaan po ng parasite po yan. And yun po pala, we can relate it in our lives today, we can relate it into our spirituality. When we are surrounded by these enemies, that's what it means that God, you anoint my head with oil. And when you anoint my head with oil, kahit magugtugan pa kami ng mga enemies ko, wala akong dapat ikatakot because I'm covered by God's anointing in my life today. Amen. Sige pala, paka po natin si Lord. Hindi ko kailangan katakutan yung demonyo na siya po ay papasok sa aking puso, sa aking isip. Hindi niya na magagawa yun because God's anointing is covering my life. Kahit anong weapon that the enemy had formed against me, if I have the presence of God, if I have the anointing of God, anything that he had made for me to be destroyed, to be killed, it won't prosper. It will turn out for our good today. Amen po ba yun? Sige po, palakpang po natin si Lord. Okay guys. At yun po yung power ng anointing ng Panginoon. Kaya kung na-experience mo na yung anointing ni Jesus Christ for your life, kung na-experience mo na yung anointing ng Panginoon for your calling, kung na-experience mo na yung anointing ng Panginoon for your family, iingatan po natin yan. Iingatan po natin because that anointing is the very thing that is protecting our lives. At yung anointing po na yan, ano po ba yan? Tinipid ba ni Lord yan sa pag-pour out sa atin? Alam niya po, hindi po yan sapat lang. Hindi po yan yung good for the day lang. Yung anointing po ng Panginoon, sabi sa kanyang salita, my cup runs over. Or in other translation, it means, my cup overflows. At kapag tinignan po natin yan, in Hebrew, ang ibig sabihin niya po ay rava. At ang ibig sabihin niya po is to saturate. At ano po bang ibig sabihin ng saturate? Kapag tinignan po natin sa dictionary po yan, ang ibig sabihin po pala niyan is for us to unite, for you to soak thoroughly, or to destroy a target completely. Yan po yung ibig sabihin po ng saturate. At hindi po ba yan yung gusto natin sa ating buhay? Hindi po ba yan yung gusto natin sa ating church? We want to be united as one church. Amen po ba yan? Gusto po natin united tayo towards one vision, Gusto po natin united tayo towards one direction. Gusto po natin united yung mga puso natin sa pinapagawa ng Panginoon. Hindi po ba ito po yung gusto po natin that we may soak thoroughly in the most holy presence of God? Amen po ba doon? We want to be soaked in the most holy presence of God kasi ang sarap sa presensya ng Panginoon. Kung pwedeng araw-araw lang, Sunday, we want that because we want to be soaked in the presence of God. Hindi po ba ito po yung gusto po natin to destroy our enemies completely? Yung mga inner pain, yung mga inner guilt, yung mga inner sin, yung mga inner persecution, yung mga inner demons natin at hindi lang po yung mga inner battles, even our outside battles, our persecutions, our valleys, our wilderness. Gusto po natin i-destroy lahat po yan. Why? Why do we want to be united? Why do we want to soak in God's presence? Why do we de- want to destroy our internal and external enemies for a revival. We want all those things because those are the ingredients for us to experience a revival today. Sino po dito gusto maka-experience ng revival sa kanyang buhay? Amen. Sige po, palakpakan natin si Lord. And you know what? Nung ako po ay nasa corporate world ba, gusto ko pong yumaman. Sino po dito gustong yumaman? Siyempre, lahat tayo gusto natin yumaman. 
However, bago ko po pasukin po kasi yung pagyaman, kinausap ko muna si Lord at nagtatry po ako mag-self-evaluate. At ito po yung tanong ko, paano ko masasabi na mayaman ako? Or paano mo masasabi na mayaman ka? Masusukat mo ba yun sa dami na yung pera? Masusukat mo ba yun sa dami ng iyong kotse? Masusukat mo ba yun sa laki ng iyong bahay? Ganun lang, mayaman ka na. So nung tinatry ko po i- measure yun, sabi ko, ang babaw naman kung doon ko lang susukatin ang, para masabi na ako mayaman. Kung susukatin ko lang sa material things, masyadong mababaw yan. Kaya nung medyo papunta po ako sa path po na yun, ito po yung na-realize ko, how can I say that I am rich? I can say that I am rich if the people around me are rich. If my community became rich, if the city became rich, ibig sabihin, yung aking kayamanan, yung aking wealth, yung aking richness, ay hindi ko lang sinarili. Sinair ko po sa iba at nag-improve yung buhay ng bawat isa. That's how I define someone being rich. However, hindi na po ako doon dinala ni Lord. Hindi na ako dinala sa corporate. Hindi ko na po na-experience yung business life. Dito na po ako dinala, dinala ni Lord in being a full-time, being a full-time pastor. Now I got to define how can I say that I am revived? And this is how I would define that I am revived if my whole country experienced the revival of Jesus Christ in their lives. I thank God for the pandemic. Through the pandemic, I realize why I am here on earth. It is just for one thing. It is, it is for born again Filipinas to happen in my lifetime and in your lifetime and in my parents' lifetime. There's nothing on earth that will make me joyful than to see this country, every Filipino, receiving the love of Jesus Christ and sharing the gospel all throughout the nation. That's my sole purpose. And I intend to make that happen through the power of God. Bakit kasi ganun yung anointing ng Panginoon? Ganun yung blessing ng Panginoon para sa iyong buhay. Kapag naramdaman mo yung pagmamahal ng Panginoon, hindi yan meant na sarilinin mo. Hindi yan meant na itago mo lang para sa iyong sarili. Bakit? Kasi nag-uumapaw yung pagmamahal ng Panginoon. Nag-uumapaw yung oil ng Panginoon. It overflows. It runs over. It saturates. That's why it is meant to be shared to be shared to your friends, to be shared to your family, to be shared to the people out there. They need Jesus Christ. They need to be born again. At sino po ba yung pwedeng makatabi si Jesus Christ sa table? Sino bang credible? Sino bang worthy na makasama ni Jesus Christ sa table? Sabi po sa Matthew chapter 9, it says here, As Jesus passed on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax office. He was at his office table. He was his, at his tax table. And Jesus Christ said to him, follow me. So Matthew arose and followed Jesus Christ. And what happened in verse 10, it says, Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, many tax collectors, many sinners came and sat down with Jesus Christ and His disciples. Sino po nakatabi po ni Jesus Christ? Ang nakatabi po ni Jesus Christ ay yung mga makakasalanan. Ang nakatabi ni Jesus Christ ay yung mga tax collectors. Ang bansag po sa mga tax collectors, sila po yung mandaraya, mandurugas, hindi nagbabay ng tamang buwis, may under the table. Pero bakit sila po yung nakasama ni Jesus Christ table? Ba't sila yung nakaupo ni Jesus Christ sa table niya? Bakit? Ito lang po yung ginawa po nila. Naging open lang sila sa invitation ng Panginoong Heso Kristo sa kanilang buhay. At ganyan din po yung mensahe na binibigay ng Panginoon for this congregation. Yes, meron kang dark past. Yes, meron kang kasalanan na ginagawa sa buhay mo. At currently, ginagawa mo pa rin hanggang ngayon. Meron kang kasalanan na sa tingin mo, hindi ka na mapapatawad ng Panginoon. Pero wag ka mag-alala. Kailangan mo lang maging open 
at kaya kang i-welcome ulit ng Panginoon sa kanyang presensya. Amen. Sige mo, palakpangan po natin si Lord. That's why you just gotta be open today. And where can you be open? You can be open to bring worship at your homes. Bakit ito yung kaya mong gawin? Pray for us. Pray for the workers of the church. Pray for the leaders of the church. Pray that this city may be born again. Pray that this country may be born again. Maybe you can do more. Maybe you can bring one more soul for Jesus. Next week, we have a special dance celebration here in church. Baka pwede kang magdala ng isang kaluluwa. Just bring one more soul. Or siguro ikaw po yung nabibitin dito every Sunday. Alam niyo po, every Saturday, punong-puno pa rin po yung church. Andiyan po yung men's, andiyan po yung ladies, andiyan po yung youth, yung YA, punong-puno po yung church. At you may join a fellowship. Sama po kayo sa isang fellowship that you may meet new friends. Friends who will lead you closer to Christ. Amen po ba yun? Your new family members here in the kingdom of God. Or siguro hanggang ngayon, hindi mo alam yung gagawin mo sa buhay mo. Hindi mo alam yung next step. Gusto mo ng training program. Well, good news. Today is the start of the enrollment of our CLDP program, the Christian Life Development Program. At dyan mo malalaman yung basics ng pagiging Christian. Dyan mo malalaman yung next steps ng buhay mo. And I believe today, meron kang talent. Amen po ba yun? Meron kang skills, meron kang time, marunong kang umite, marunong kang kumamay. Maybe this is a time for you to join a ministry. And what is God just telling you today? All you got to do is to be open. Just be open and the hand of God can work mighty ways in your life that you have never imagined in your life. Amen po ba Sige po palakpakan natin si Lord. Just like the people in this picture, a famous picture, a picture of the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, at ako po'y naniniwala sa mga disciples po na mga nandyan, sa mga workers po na nandyan, sa mga leaders po na nandyan, sa mga volunteers po na nandyan, hindi po nila akalain that they will reach this point. Hindi po nila akalain na ganito nila magiging ka-close si Jesus Christ. Hindi po nila akalain that they will disrupt the whole world and transform people, nations, through advancing the kingdom of God. I believe hindi po nila inakala na mangyayari po yan sa buhay po nila. Bakit? Saan po ba sila nanggaling in Matthew chapter 4? It says here in verse 18, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. They were professionals. They were businessmen. They were ordinary people. But here comes Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. And I will make you fissures of men. And what did they do? They immediately left their nets. They immediately left their tables. They immediately left their offices. They immediately left their businesses. They immediately left their professions and followed Jesus Christ. That's what they did. They followed Jesus Christ. And that's the message God is telling you today. Can you just follow me? Can you just follow Jesus Christ today? Because I believe the harvest is ready for our church today. Amen po ba yun? Sige po palakpaka po natin si Lord. And I tell you the truth, that Jesus Christ doesn't need a physical table to perform His works. Because Jesus Christ is the Lord of hosts. He can host any dinner party for you. He can host any feast for you. Bakit po ano pong ibig sabihin ng the Lord of hosts? It means the God of heaven's armies. That's why nothing is impossible for our Lord Jesus Christ. Dahil kasama niya po yung million, million of angels in heavens to protect your life. Million, million angels to provide for your every need, just like what he did when he was feeding the 5,000. What do you have in your hands? What do you have in your life? Do you have time? Are you available? 
Are you committed? Are you willing? My pera wala doesn't matter. What do you have? All you got to do is to give it to Jesus. All you got to do is to obey to Jesus. And you know what? With your obedience, He can perform a miracle in your life. Right here. Right now. He can perform it for your life. And I believe and I claim that miracle is coming soon for our church day. That healing we've been praying for, it is coming soon. That breakthrough that you've been crying out for, it is coming soon. All you got to do today is to prepare the table for a revival is coming soon, church. It is coming soon. The revival of God is coming soon. I believe Jesus Christ is coming soon. Sino po dito gusto maka-experience ng revival para sa kanyang buhay? Sige po, palakpangan po natin si Lord if that's what you want. At ano po ba yung revival po na yan? This is the, the revival you've been waiting for, the restoration for your life, the restoration for your families. If you've been into sin, at siguro dark na yung buhay mo, madumi na yung buhay mo, Jesus Christ can restore you once again in your life today. For the workers of this church, I know your heart. Lord, paramihin mo yung volunteers namin. Paramihin mo yung leaders ng sibahan namin. Paramihin mo, Lord God, yung nag evangelize Paramihin mo, Lord God, yung mga modern Levites. And that victory is coming soon in the name of Jesus. It is coming soon. And you're gonna see your value. You're gonna see the value of what you've been through. Nagtataka ba? Ha, bakit kailangan mo dumaan sa hirap? Ba't mo kailangan dumaan sa persecution? Ba't mo kailangan dumaan sa temptation? Ba't mo kailangan dumaan sa valley? Bakit mo kailangan dumaan sa wilderness? Ba't mo kailangan dumaan sa desert? Why? Because I want you to be ready for the revival that you may catch the harvest because it is coming, church. Give God a praise. Give God a praise. The Holy Spirit is moving right now. And God is ready to let you experience that revival for your life today. That's why today is the best day to start to serve in God's army. Serve in God's army. Sige po, palakpakan natin ang ating Panginoon. And God made me realize, kahit anong preach ko po sa inyo, kahit anong pangungulit ko po sa inyo, kahit anong pag exhort ko po sa inyo, I personally don't have the power to change your minds. I don't have the power to make you commit right here, right now. At kahit anong pangungulit ng mga leaders ng church, ng mga workers po ng church, sa labas po ng exit doors, sa labas po ng lobby, they personally, individually, they don't have the power to make you commit, to change your minds, to transform you. But God is making us realize today, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And He's the one who's going to transform your lives. He's the one who's going to change your minds. And He's the one who's going to let you serve in His army. Amen po ba yun? Sige po, pwede ba natin palapakan ng Panginoon today? Kaya po, yan po yung very thing that we're going to do today. This is the challenge, church. We're just going to be open for whatever God wants. Today in the service, members, workers, leaders, pastors, we're just going to be open for the Holy Spirit's movement in our church today. And if that person is you saying, Lord, yes, I want to be open. I want to be open for your plans. I want to be open for your movement. I want to be open for your Holy Spirit's power. Can you stand up for your mercies today? And as one church, we're going to be open for you. Here is your army. Here are your worshipers, oh God. Here are your evangelists. Here are your revivalists. We want to be open for you. And today, you are free to move. You are free to revive someone today. You are free to perform whatever miracle you want today. We are open, God. We are open for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Revival, Pentecost.
an army of men, an army of women, an army of worshipers. Oh God, we worship you. Come on, give God a praise. Join me in this prayer. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I am. I am. Open for you. Open for you. I am open. I am open. For your plans. For your plans. For your power. For your power. For your purpose. For your purpose. For your miracles. For your miracles. I am open. I am open. For your movement. For your movement. In my life. In my life. I am open. I am open to follow you. To follow you. All the days. All the days. Of my life. Of my life. No more contradicting. No more contradicting. No more questioning. No more questioning. No more running. No more running. Here I am, O oh Lord. Here I am, O oh Lord. I, I will, will follow you. Follow you. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Till the last days. Till the last days. Of my life. Of my life. I am open. I am open. For you, Jesus. For you. Hallelujah. Jesus. We just give God a very best clap offering. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we leave this place, come and lift up our tithes and offering to the Lord. Lord Jesus, we are open for your blessing. Yeah, Panginoon, this is how we reciprocate, Lord God. We will give back. We will give our tithes faithfully, truthfully, honestly, Panginoon. Kasi sa totoo lang, Panginoon, wala kaming malalagay sa sobre na ito, Panginoon. Kung hindi mo kami sinamahan, Kung hindi mo kami blinis, wala kaming mabibigay. So Lord God, don't let money be the hindrance, Lord God, for us to follow you. We are willing to leave our tables. We are willing to leave our professions, Lord God. Whatever table in front of us, we are willing to leave it because you are calling us to follow you. And immediately, we will follow you all the rest of our lives, my Lord. So Lord God, sige po palapangan natin ang ating buhay na Diyos. It deserves the highest praise. And today, Lord God, I lift up to you this congregation, this beautiful church, this beautiful service, Painon. In the name of Jesus Christ, the enemy has no power over their lives. The enemy cannot kill, steal, and destroy what you have done in their lives today. Because millions of millions of angels are protecting each life today. And Lord God, you will provide for their every need. Millions of angels are there, Lord God, to provide for their every need, Panginoon. Kaya wala kami dapat ikatakot, wala kami dapat ikapangamba, Panginoon. We are able and ready to follow you all the rest of our lives, Lord God. So today, I pronounce your blessing upon your people. I pronounce your anointing, your wisdom, and your favor, Lord God, to be upon them, Lord God, all the days of their lives. Hayaan mo mag-umapaw yun, Panginoon. Let it overflow to their families, 
to their friends, to their community, to their city, to this nation, oh God. And we believe, Lord God, your will will be done in our lifetime, Lord God. We claim the victory and we give you back all the glory and all the praise in the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody shout! Amen, amen and amen. Hello again, CLG fam! Thank you for being part of our wonderful Sunday worship service. We hope you had a special moment and an intimate time with the Lord. There is power in every encounter with Him. Kaya, we hope this made an impact to your heart and soul. Keep seeking and you will find Him. So guys, if you want to take your next step and you decide to sign up and serve in God's army, or you just simply want to be connected to a group, just type next steps and our online team will get in touch with you. Or if you need counseling and prayer, our COG Lifeline counselors are ready to welcome you. Just type prayer and we'll connect you to the team. Also, we're truly blessed to have this opportunity to gather even online. So keep sharing the good news, guys. If you want to know more about our happenings here at COG, check out our Instagram and Facebook at COG Dasma. That's it for today. I'm Christelle. Thank you for having me here. God bless you all, and we'll see you again next Sunday. Bye! To him, even a season of pause is a season of purpose. Even in solitude, we magnified his sovereignty. But this 2023 We will gather As one man It's time To dream again To dive into the unknown with faith To explore the depths of His power To cross the unbelief swiftly move forward to reach the unseen and witness the fullness of His glory. We are going further.